recently very important news were published about orbiting mirrors and solar sail. The first news with us says, mirrors in space could boost solar power production on Earth. A California-based startup wants to launch a constellation of orbiting mirrors, which will beam sunlight to solar power plants to boost renewable electricity production after dark. A prototype light reflecting satellite could make its way to orbit next year. Ben Noack, the founder and CE, of Reflect Orbital introduced the company's plans at the International Conference on Energy from Space held here last week. Reflect Orbital envisions a constellation of 57 small satellites orbiting Earth in a formation in sun-synchronous polar orbit at an altitude of 600 kilometers. In that orbit, the satellites would circle the planet from pole to pole while the planet rotates underneath them. The satellites would fly over each spot on Earth at the same time of the day, making two passes per 24 hours. Combined, the 57 satellites would provide an additional 30 minutes of sunshine to the power plants at the time when energy is most needed. The problem is that solar energy is not available when we actually want it. The more solar farms we build, the less people actually want it during the day. It would be really great if we could get some solar energy before the sun rises and after sunset because then you could actually charge higher prices and make a lot more money. And we think that reflector-based technologies can solve this problem. The cost of solar panels has dropped by 90% over the past 15 years, according to the International Renewable Energy Agency, and their efficiency continues to increase thanks to advances in photovoltaic technology. Thanks to that, solar power is now the cheapest form of electricity that has ever been available to humankind. But the intermittent nature of solar energy generation is a problem that experts are still struggling to solve. On cloudy days, solar power plants are less productive than when the sky is clear. At night, solar energy generation stops completely. Battery systems and other renewables could make up for some of that shortfall, but so far nuclear and coal and gas-fired power plants are needed as a backup. It's very easy to replace the first 1% of the energy grid with renewables. It's very hard to replace the last 1%. That is the energy that you need on a day that is not windy but rainy. Reflect Orbital's satellites will weigh only 16 kilograms each and will be fitted with Mylar mirrors 9.9 .9 by 9.9 .9 meters in size that deploy in orbit. Mylar is a plastic material used in space blankets, insulators, and packaging. The mirrors are engineered to concentrate light into a tight beam that could be steered and focused based on the demand by solar farm operators. If you are around 10 kilometers from the edge of a solar farm site, you're not going to see any light at all if you look up straight into the sky. You may see some sort of glowing light, like there is some construction going on. If you look in the direction of the solar farm, last summer Reflect Orbital tested its mirror on a hot air balloon floating three kilometers above a solar farm. The company was able to generate 500 watts of energy per square meter of solar panel, which is about half the brightness of the sun. The company has secured funding to fly its first test satellite in space next year. Other teams are studying orbiting mirror concepts to boost solar power generation. For instance, the University of Glasgow in Scotland is leading a European research project called SolSpace, which also examines the possibility of placing satellites fitted within reflecting kennels into orbit to direct sunlight toward large solar farms at the beginning and end of each day when demand for electricity is highest. Russia experimented with orbital mirrors in the 1990s with its Xenemia project. The Xenemia 2 mission launched in 1992 and deployed a mirror in orbit that briefly flashed a beam of light toward Earth that traversed Europe from southern France to western Russia. The satellite fell back into Earth's atmosphere after only a few hours. Orbiting mirrors, however, have their opponents. Speaking at the London conference, Andrew Williams of the European Southern Observatory warned that orbiting reflectors, unless designed with care, could shine more brightly than the brightest stars and exacerbate the satellite light pollution problem that astronomers are already facing. The second news with us says, Rocket Lab launches new NASA solar sail tech to orbit. Rocket Lab launched a South Korean Earth observation satellite in new NASA solar sailing tech to orbit this evening. The agency's advanced composite solar sail system for short was one of two payloads that lifted off atop a Rocket Lab electron vehicle from New Zealand today at 6.33 p.m. The Rocket Lab mission turned out to be the second half of a spaceflight doubleheader. 
Solar sails harness the subtle push of sunlight, using it to propel probes through space, much as seagoing ships capture the wind here on Earth. Because solar sailing is efficient and requires no fuel, many exploration advocates have high hopes for this relatively novel propulsion strategy. A few solar sailing missions have already flown, including Japan's Ikeros spacecraft and the Planetary Society's LightSail 2. AXE aims to develop the technology further. Rocket Lab wrote in a mission description, the mission plans to test the deployment of new composite booms that will unfurl the solar sail to measure approximately 9 meters per side, or about the size of a small apartment in total. Flight data obtained during the demonstration will be used for designing future larger scale composite solar sail systems for space weather early warning satellites, asteroid and other small body reconnaissance missions, and missions to observe the polar regions of the sun. AXE was the secondary payload on today's mission, which Rocket Lab call Beginning of the swarm, the main passenger was NEONSAT-1, an Earth observation satellite developed by the, the Satellite Technology Research Center at the Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology. NEONSAT-1 will use a high-resolution camera and artificial intelligence tech to monitor and track natural disasters along the Korean coastline, according to Rocket Lab. Other NEONSAT spacecraft will launch in 2026 and 2027 to add to the constellation, which explains the beginning of the swarm moniker. The two satellites headed to different orbits. The Electron deployed NEONSAT-1 520 kilometers above Earth about 50 minutes after liftoff and deposited AXE at an altitude of 1,000 kilometers 55 minutes later as planned. Beginning of the swarm was Rocket Lab's fifth orbital launch of 2024 and its 47th overall. All but four of the company's liftoffs to date have occurred from its New Zealand site on the North Island's Mejia Peninsula. The others have lifted off from NASA's Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia. Rocket Lab is working to make the 18-meter tall electrons first stage reusable. The company has recovered boosters from the sea on multiple prior missions and is planning to refly one of them on an upcoming launch. But there were no recovery activities on. Beginning of the swarm, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.